some UVA sports news and notes. Hey, Chris Graham here. Still dealing a little bit with the cold, but uh, we're getting close um, to being better. And then also getting close to the top five matchup on Saturday at JPJ, number two, Virginia, number five, Houston. And uh, had a nice piece today. Been saving it for a few days on Ryan Dunn, the uh, freshman for uh, the Cavaliers, who is a key to the rotation versatility that Tony Bennett so desires, most coaches so desire. But Tony Bennett had a few years ago when he won a national championship, that big banner hanging up there, JPJ. And it was Monmouth coach King Rice who got us thinking about DeAndre Hunter and then Ryan Dunn. Uh, Monmouth uh, had played Virginia early in uh, DeAndre's uh, redshirt freshman year, and it was his breakout game. He had 23 points in that game. And uh, then when Dunn had 13 points in Virginia's win over Monmouth earlier this season, King Rice said, hey, I've seen this happen before. Um, And he's the one who threw the comparison out to the guy who was the fourth pick of the 2019 draft. And um, yeah, fair or unfair, now we're all going in that realm, right? Uh, you know, it's probably unfair to the kid. Uh, Dunn uh, is is still a, a freshman average of 12.4 minutes a game. And DeAndre Hunter is the, was the fourth pick of the draft in 2019, just signed a $90 million extension with the Atlanta Hawks. So Dunn's got some work to do to get there. But uh, he's got the skills. He's got uh, the skills and the other, other numbers. He's 6'8". He's got a 7-foot wingspan. You know, when UVA was recruiting him, he was a 6'5 guard. He's he's grown into a you know man's body. I don't know if he shaves every day or anything else, but he's 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 getting there, right? And um, he can shoot from the perimeter. Uh, he's hitting 40% of his threes. Uh, he can get to the basket. He can finish at the basket hard. We've seen um, uh, him do that. Uh, he had a couple of big baskets. He, he only had four points, five rebounds, three blocks. Uh, in the win over JMU, Virginia's most recent game last week before the exam break. But uh, those two baskets were one was a dunk on a fast break through a guy. Uh, the other was a, a driving layup late in the game after JMU cut the lead to two inside of a minute to go. And uh, the freshman got the ball in the corner, pump faked his guy, uh, and then drove to the basket, finished with a, with a hard driving layup. And uh, – that even more than the Monmouth game uh, reminded me of De- what DeAndre Hunter could do. Uh, he had the three blocks, like I mentioned. Uh, he, what he can do defensively, he can guard one to five. Uh, he's a guy who can, you know, you, you don't worry about him on the pick and roll. If, he, if he's getting switched on the pick and roll, he's he's covering whoever he's got to cover. Um, he's That's the kind of – he's positionless. As, you know, the NBA game has become a positionless game. Uh, there are a lot of times you look out on the floor and see the tallest guy on the floor, 6'8". Um, and, and NBA teams value, uh, you know, the defenders who can cover, you know, guys from guards to forwards to centers, uh, and they can score from three levels as well. Uh, and Dunn is a guy like that. And, uh, um, you know, that was the key when you look back at Virginia's team in 2018, 2019, the team that won the national championship. Tony Bennett had two guys like that. Um, Braxton Key was another Swiss Army knife type guy. Braxton Key, um, you know, not quite the level he, he was. He, he undrafted. He's now he's he's back and forth NBA G League with the Detroit Pistons and their G League team. So he's he's at that next level as well. Um, and I think there's a similar dynamic with this year's Virginia team with Ryan Dunn and Ben Vanderplas. Vanderplas is a grad transfer from Ohio U, uh, a six eight guy who can stretch the floor with his three point shooting. Um, a good passer, both in the post and from the perimeter, could play defense um, not one to five, but I'd say three to five. He's at six eight; he can guard centers, and he's 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 had to do that and, and done well in some big games for Virginia this year. So, um, you know, he's a guy who's got that kind of versatility. Um, those two guys are 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 keys. I mean, I know we we talk about Reese Beekman and how important he is with this Virginia team, and no doubt that's the case. Um, but that, you know, the offense is around Reese Beekman, the defense um, and, and the lineup flexibility that guys like Ryan Dunn and Ben Vanderplas can give um, Tony Bennett will be really important for this team this season. So um, keep your eye on that. Um, one other thing we had today uh, on the Augusta Free Press website, um, I did a uh, NFL draft evaluation 
um, such as I can do, <laughs> uh, for the three wide receiver prospects that are either have already entered the draft or are expected to. I don't know why Keaton Thompson has not formally declared yet. Um, he can come back. Um, six-year guy. <laughs> um, he'll have all the degrees if he comes back for one more year. But yeah, the the um, guys with eligibility left who um, were were on the team this year <clears throat> because of the way the season ended will have the ability to uh, come back for a year if they want to. So I, I have not seen that Thompson has formally declared. I just I, I can't believe he won't formally declare. We've already seen Billy Kemp and Dontavian Wicks do so. So what I did today was I, I looked around. I went to the a number of draft big boards, um, big and small, you know, ESPN, CBS Sports, and some that you maybe not heard of. I hadn't heard of necessarily either. But those who, uh, you know, kind of placing guys where they may go in the draft based on where things are now, December 15th, 2022, you know, months away from late April of 2023. It looks like Dontavian Wicks, is the guy that is is projected to be the the guy of the three that will definitely get drafted. Maybe a day two guy, maybe a day three guy. Uh, day two would be, you know, middle round, second, third, fourth round. Day three would be five through seven, I guess that is. Um, and it's interesting that that's the case. If that's more on potential than than what we've seen. Uh, I mean, and we've been hearing about his potential, and we saw what it could be last year, 2021, that is. Um, but we've been hearing about his potential since he first walked on ground. 6'2", 208, um, great route runner. Hands might be an issue. He had he had drops issues this year. Um, disappointing 2022. I mean, it was disappointing for everybody uh, on the offense this year with the, the new offense, with Des Kitchings, whatever he was trying to do. Still haven't figured out what it was. Um, I haven't. I don't think he has either. Um, Wicks had 30 catches on 72 targets. Last year, he had... 57 catches on 93 targets. He was first team all ACC, 1,201 yards. I mean, he had all those great catches. You know, I, I remember back when the ACC network was still watchable and they had, I love the Packard and Durham show in the mornings. I have watched like part of one of the afternoon show with Packer since it debuted in August. That's not a good sign for the ACC network, but I, I was, I was a regular watcher of the Packer and Durham show. And, um, you know, they had, among the regular segments, uh, you know, catch of the week and then the catch of the year. And boy, he had several of the catches of the year uh, nominees. Wix did last year. Um, you know, he, he could he, he catch the ball off the ground almost. You know, keep it from going to the ground. He had such strong hands. He has such strong hands. This year, I mean, I, I think it was more the you know the being put in different places. He had some drop issues. Um, so. You know, I think what NFL teams will do um, will, you know, the front offices will, I mean, they'll look at his speed, they'll look at his route running, <clears throat> and they'll say that 2022 was just bad coaching. And, um, you know, they'll look at his potential there as far as that goes. Keaton Thompson now, looking at his 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 draft uh, possibilities, he's looking like either a day three guy, <clears throat> sorry for the cough, or an undrafted free agent. Now, I think he's, an NFL guy and <clears throat> sorry for the coughing. Um, you know, his size six, five to 16. He played a lot of slot the last two years. Um, his athleticism, um, as a quarterback, he was a four-star prep quarterback and he made the switch to wide out. <clears throat> excuse me again. Um, after he injured his throwing shoulder in 2020 training camp, you know, they didn't do a lot with him in 2020. Um, you know, they were still figuring out how to use Thompson. But in 2021, he had a, a breakout year, 78 catches, 112 targets, 990 yards. 2022, his numbers weren't down as much as um, the other guys were. He still had <clears throat> 53 catches on 77 targets. Thanks to my wife for the water here. Um 579 yards. Um, I view him as a guy that, because of his height, his athleticism, you know, you could you can use him in the slot. Um, you could draft him and put him and say, 
gain 10 or 20 pounds and we'll use you as a pass catching tight end. Um, you know, primarily in the game at tight end as a, as a receiver, but, you know, we'll <clears throat> use you in some blocking situations just to throw the other team off. Um, I think, I think Thompson is, is, he's too athletic not to be an NFL player. <clears throat> sorry for the cough. I'm sorry. I really am. Um, everything else is better except for the, the scratchy throat here. Um, Billy Kemp is the last one. He's declared for the draft. I don't see it with Billy Kemp. I, I you know, he's 5'9, 172. That's what he's listed at. Um, 2022 was forgettable. He was injured most of the season. So, I, you know, I've I got the numbers in the story on the Augusta Free Press site. I don't know what good it does. Um, he had good numbers in 2020 and 2021. Um, you know, um, 77 catches, 79 catches in those two seasons, you know, um, lots of targets, lots of yards. It's just, he's, he's small, um, as a slot receiver, um, and he's injured a lot. I, I, I don't know that I've seen Billy Kemp and no one else that I've seen on the NFL draft boards do either. <clears throat> I promise I'm going to get better <laughs> as far as this goes. So check those stories out on Augusta Free Press. Uh, there's more detail about the receivers. There's a lot of detail about Ryan Dunn. And um, we're going to keep getting you ready for EVA Houston on Saturday. I know our sister website, uh, jerryratcliffe.com, um, we're working to get he, – he did an interview today for his uh, podcast with Jay Billis to help preview that game. So we'll have that up as well. Um, and uh, so that's, that's coming up. Uh, if you have any questions for me, email me at chris at augustafreepress.com.